Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you how to restore a basil plant which has started to look rather sickly or is even dying and how to bring it back into full health and so you can harvest it again and again. So this here is a good example of what a basil plant might look like after it's been sitting on your windowsill for about six months. This one has been sitting on my windowsill in my kitchen for six months and all I've done is water it. I haven't fed it. I've only given it some minor pruning to take off a few leaves for cooking. But otherwise I've just kind of left it and this is pretty typical of what might happen to your basil plant. So when you normally buy them from the shops they're normally a lot shorter, normally around about this height here, quite bushy and quite healthy looking. The problem is they're at the size where they're already using up all the nutrients inside the pot and if they were to stay in that small pot like this one has they use up that nutrients really quickly and then they just run out of energy for growing because they need lots of of nutrients and feed to keep them going and also they don't have much space for their roots. This has a couple of problems. This makes it more difficult for them to absorb the nutrients even if it is there. There's less space for their roots to absorb water so they're more drought stressed but also when you're watering them the water dries out very quickly from the pot because they can't store a lot of water so that's why you get a lot of drought stress. Now this is a plant which is showing drought stress. You can see the leaves are looking rather wilted and curled up here. That's a typical sign of a drought stress plant. You can see that they're all kind of curled up. The leaves are looking very pale as well. This is a sign that it needs more feed. If it had plenty of feed, it'd be dark green leaves. Also, the lower leaves have gone yellow and they're falling off and dying. That's a sign of nitrogen deficiency. So this basically needs more feed, more space for its roots to grow. And so that's what I'll be solving in this video. Also, it could do with a bit more light. You can see it's a very tall, straggly plant. It's reaching for the light. And another thing that shows you that it's stressed is it has all these flowering shoots. So when the basil plant starts to flower, it puts up a green shoot like this here, but instead of leaves, it has lots of little blue or purple flowers. The problem with that is it puts all its energy into flowering and then into seeds, and it doesn't put any more energy into leaves. So you can see where it's flowered previously, these stems have died back. So the individual stems, as soon as they start flowering, you want to take those flowers off. So I'll just go ahead now and start doing a bit of pruning and show you what you need to do to bring your plant into a healthier state. So if it does start to flower, like this one here, you just take off any of these flowering stems. And when it comes to the location of pruning, you want to prune it so that you're cutting it just above where some new shoots will come out from. So you want to cut it off around about here, just with a pair of scissors or secateurs. That way, in between where the two leaves are, where they join the stem, it will actually grow out new stems and you'll have a bushier plant and it will grow nicely. If you were to cut it off at this point, this top bit of stem would actually die off and then you just have an unsightly dead bit of stem. So that's why you want to cut it down right next to where it's going to have new growth. So with your leggy plant, the main thing you need to do is feed it and repot it and it should do much better. So what I'm going to do here is a bit of pruning before that. Once your plant gets too leggy like this, it really needs to be pruned. Now unfortunately, this very tall leggy growth, if I was to cut this back hard, it probably wouldn't regrow. When you prune basil, you want them to have at least some green leaves left. So this long shoot, for example, if I cut this down to this level here, there's nothing really green on this level, so it would probably die off. So I'll have to be a bit more selective with this shoot. Take off any dead, cut back to where there's still some healthy green leaves. And that's about as hard as I can do with that, with that stem there. But what I'll also do with this is just gently remove any of these dead leaves that are completely dry. If I leave them, they're unsightly, they block light from getting to the other stems, but also they could have mold and mildew growing on them in the future. So I need to remove any of those dead bits. So I'll just go ahead now, cut back any of these leggy growths and remove any dead material and that will straight away make the plant look a lot healthier. And this is the beginning of the process to bring your plant back to health. So you can see there the plant already looks a bit better without all that dead material on it and if I pan down you'll be able to see how much material I've taken off. As I say it's quite important to try and get it a bit lower so it's bushier, a less leggy plant but also at every point where you cut it it will encourage side branches to come out and you'll get a much bushier healthier looking plant because of that. So what I'll do now is I'll get rid of all this dead material and I'll get ready for repotting it into a larger pot. So this plant is currently in a 12.5 centimetre pot and I'll be upgrading it into a 2 litre pot. Now if you've got a small basil plant, a 1 litre might, might do okay or a 2 litre pot is also decent. And for any American viewers, a 2 litre pot is probably around about half a gallon. So that's about the size you're wanting for optimum growth. You can probably get away with a 1 litre pot which is about a quarter of a gallon. But 2 litre will just give you a bit more root space for the plant 
and it'll just be easier with watering. The bigger the plant pot, the longer it takes for the soil to dry out. That way if you forget to water it one day, it's not going to suddenly wilt and get stressed. And it's important that you don't let the plant get stressed because that's when the flowers appear. And as I said previously, if it's flowering, it's not producing healthy leaves. Now when it comes to all the cutting material that you've taken off with the pruning, you should have a lot of kind of leafy material like this here. What you can actually do is you can use this for cuttings to make new plants. Now that isn't going to be the highlight of this video because I've got a whole long video all about how to propagate basil. So if you want to watch that, there'll be a link in the description or there'll also be a link in the iCard on the top right of the screen. So I'm now going to go ahead and repot this plant. So I just need to ta carefully take it out of the pot, trying not to damage the the roots too much we don't want to cause any additional stress this plant is already in quite a poor state of health take it out there as you can see it is very root bound the roots are also very unhealthy if you have healthy roots they should be nice white bright white roots these are, are kind of a dull brown color so they're really unhealthy that's because this has been drought stressed a lot and it's run out of nutrients and it's just not really putting any new growth on if the roots are, are new, they're normally white and healthy. If they're old and they're not growing, they're not absorbing much nutrients, they're normally this kind of dull brown color. And if they're dark brown and soft, then they're rotten. But these aren't rotting, so it's not overwatering. It's underwatering, that's the problem here. Now what you can do is, if your plant is a bit healthier than mine, you can actually separate these plants individually. You can maybe make up to 10 plant pots with basil plants, because you often get 10 or 20 individual basil plants in a small pot like this. But as my plant is so stressed, I think that stress of of disturbing the roots will actually kill it so I'm not going to be doing this in this video but that's something you can do if you get a new basil plant you can separate them into individual pots and they'll do better with that extra root space. So when it comes to repotting it's important to think about soil. So what I'm using here is actually a rich multi-purpose compost. When it comes to compost you want something that holds plenty of moisture because basil doesn't like to dry out and have very dry soil so you want a nice rich multi-purpose compost that's quite an easy compost to find. If you can't get a rich multi-purpose compost, you could just use some homemade compost or some really rich garden soil. But any kind of rich multi-purpose compost should be good for the, the job because it's got a lot of nutrients already added to it and it holds a lot of moisture. And the only thing you want to watch is that it doesn't become waterlogged. So when you are repotting it, make sure you've got holes in the bottom of your pot and make sure when you water it, any water that collects underneath the pot is then removed so it's just not sitting in water because if basil sits soaking wet, it will rot off its roots. But generally, it likes to be damp, it doesn't like to dry out completely. So just make sure it's got good drainage, but it's a good multi-purpose compost which will hold a lot of water as well so that it's always well watered. So I'm just going to repot this now. What I need to make sure is it's repotted around about the height it was in the pot previously. If you go a little bit deeper, it's not too much of an issue. Basil is quite good at putting out new roots along its stems, so don't worry too much about that. But ideally, repot it around about the same level that it was previously in the pot. So one way to check this is you just get your, your plant and you just carefully put it into the pot and see how much lower it is. And so what you want to do is just keep topping up the compost until it's about the right level. So I can see there, that's about the right level. I want it just a bit lower than the edges. The reason being, if you fill it up with compost right to the edges of the pot, the problem is there's no space for the water when you're watering it. If your bottom watering is not such a problem, but if you're top watering and the compost is right to the surface, it's hard to get enough water into the pot. So I always like to have the compost layer just about a centimeter or so, or half an inch below the rim of the pot. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and carefully put the compost in. What I'll do is I'll just make sure that the, the plant is upright and I'll hold the stems inwards so that they're not getting in the way of the compost. I'm just going to carefully scatter the compost around the plant. Now if your new pot is not much bigger than the old one, it might be quite difficult to get the compost down to the edges. There's a couple of ways you can deal with that. You can either gently push it down with your finger, or you can just give the pot and the plant a shake, and the compost should distribute down. And you just want to gently firm the compost down, just so there's no air gaps, because if there's air gaps, the roots will dry out and they won't grow properly. But you don't want to push the compost down really hard. The reason being, if you push the compost down very hard, what will happen is you'll compress the air spaces, 
so that the plant roots will actually suffocate, they won't be able to grow as well. And also if you've got very hard compost, it's very difficult for the plant roots to grow through it, and so the plant will struggle to grow. You, what you want is a nice loose compost, but firm down enough they don't have any big air spaces or, or any large gaps. So you can either gently push down with your fingers, or you can shake it and just gently tamp the plant down and that should do the job for you. So now that the plant is repotted, what you want to do is give it a good watering from the top. This will help the compost wash into the roots and any gaps that are in the compost should be filled in with the compost. So give it a good soak from above, let any excess drain out and then you just want to start watering normally. So what you want to do is check the compost every day. Make sure that the compost never fully dries out but you don't want to water it if it's soaking wet. So just check, check it with your fingers every day. If the top layer of compost is just starting to dry out, then it's time to water. If the top layer of compost is still wet or quite damp, then I would leave it a bit longer, wait for it to dry out a bit more, and then water it. And as I said previously, any water that comes out the bottom, if it collects in a tray, you need to empty that if it's still there after half an hour of watering, just so it's not waterlogged. And now when it comes to aftercare, once it's repotted, you should find that if you use multi-purpose compost, there's a lot of feed already added. So you won't actually need to feed the plant for the first two months. But if you've used garden soil, or if you've used something like 100% coir mix, though it hasn't got any added nutrients, you might want to then feed the plant. And if it's been growing in this compost for over two months, you'll also want to feed it. So when it comes to feed, a balanced feed would normally be fine, but if you want to get extra lush growth and really big leaves and lots of leafy growth, what you want is a feed that's slightly higher in nitrogen because high nitrogen levels produces lots of large leaves as leaves mainly need nitrogen to grow. So go for a high nitrogen feed if you can. And when it comes to location, this one previously was in rather low light levels, that's why it was stretching, it was getting quite leggy. If your plant is looking the same, try and give it some more light. It, basil likes lots of sunshine, the only thing to avoid is in the midsummer, or if you're in a hot country, avoid the midday sun. The midday sun is normally too strong for it and it will suffer. Any afternoon or morning sun is good, midday sun try and avoid it otherwise it will get scorched, but it does do best with some direct sunlight. If it's winter time and you live somewhere with dark cloudy winters, you might actually need a grow light to keep this going because basil really does need decent light levels. And when it comes to temperature, try and keep it above 20 degrees. Between 20 and 30 degrees is ideal. Somewhere around the high 20s Celsius is probably best. They are a tropical plant, they do like high temperatures. If it's below 20 degrees or if your plant is on a windowsill and it's winter time there could be a cold draft coming in, that will also stunt the plant. So what I'll do now is I'll give this a good soak, I'll put it in a location where there's good light levels, I'll also set up my time lapse camera and just show you how the plant recovers. What you should notice is the leaves pick up quite quickly once the plant's been watered as this is currently drought stressed. The leaves will pick up but then it won't put on much growth for a while. The reason being is it will be putting lots of root growth on, also I've cut off most of the growing points so it needs to grow new suits so that will take a little while and then we should get some nice new growth coming through and as the new growth gets more and more there's more leaves for it to photosynthesize the growth should really rapidly expand and by the end of the time lapse this should be a nice lush looking plant with lots of green leaves. So it's now one month later and as you can see it's grown a huge amount. As you saw from that video, it starts off a little bit slow, gets growing and then puts on lots of lush new growth. I'll just rotate it now so you can see it a bit better for more size. As you can see, lots of healthy leaves which you can now start harvesting for cooking. And as I say, if you want to start pruning it back, you can watch my previous video about how to propagate it and how to make more plants. That's all you really need to do. You just need to repot the plant, give it a bit of a prune, make sure it's well watered, well fed. It will then green up really nicely, give you lots of lush green growth, and it should grow for you just fine for a year or two. That's all for this video. Hopefully you guys have found it quite useful. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment down below.